Hi everybody and welcome to something completely different. If you know me or have watched other videos on my channel, you know that I'm a classical singer and normally post videos about singer's diction and the Italian language. What you may not know is that my educational background is in finance. Yesterday I was on Reddit's Explain Like I'm Five forum and someone asked for an explanation of Bayes' theorem and Bayesian probability. Since nobody else answered his question, I gave it a try, and apparently the OP found my answer helpful, so I thought I would recap it for the YouTube crowd as well. What makes Bayesian probability challenging is that you're reasoning backward to find out the sequence of events that most likely led to a given outcome. Let's use politics as an example. A Democrat and a Republican are running for president. You aren't paying any attention to the election and don't find out who wins. Several months later, you read that businesses no longer have to pay any taxes. Curious, you go to look up who the president is who would institute this kind of a policy. Unfortunately, your internet suddenly goes out right when you're about to Google for who the president is, so you just have to guess. You know that the business taxes got cut. Is the Democrat likely to push for those cuts? Probably not. Certainly a Republican is more likely to support that kind of taxation policy. Based on the only information you have, i.e. no more business taxes, your best guess is that the president is probably a Republican. Let's go back and look at this from a different angle, where you're trying to decide who to vote for before the election. You can't be 100% sure what a given candidate will do when they're actually elected, but you can make an educated guess. Let's say this is a close election, and the two candidates are equally likely to get elected, and these are the only candidates running. The probability of the Democrat getting elected is 0.5, and the probability of the Republican getting elected is also 0.5. We'll call this P of D and P of R. Now let's focus on the case where the Democrat gets elected. Based on his platform and voting record in the past, Analysts think that if he gets elected, the chance he'll cut all business taxes is 0.25. The chance he won't cut all business taxes, i.e. he'd raise them, change the structure but not reduce them overall, or not do anything with them, is 0.75. Turning to the case where the Republican gets elected, analysts think the probability that President Republican will cut taxes to businesses is much higher, 0.85. The chances he will not cut taxes to businesses is 0.15. You can use this information to find out the total probability that taxes will be cut, regardless of who's elected. We will call the probability that taxes will be cut P of A, and the probability that they will not be cut P of A prime. The notation shown on the screen here means probability of A given D. In other words, the chance that the Democrat, if elected, cuts taxes. Similarly, P of A prime given R is the chance that the Republican doesn't cut taxes if elected. Here's the chart you can use to figure this stuff out. P of D equals 0 0.5. P of A given D, the probability that the Democrat, if elected, cuts the taxes, is 0.25. P of A prime given D, the probability that the Democrat, if elected, does not cut taxes, is 0.75. P of R is 0.5 as well. P of A given R is 0.85. P of A prime given R is 0.15. So notice that if you add P of A given D and P of A prime given D, you get 1.0, which is the probability that the Democrat, as president, will either cut the tax or not. Likewise, the probability that the Republican, as a president, will either cut the tax or not is also 1%. Since that represents the whole set of what they might do, the probability that they will do either something or nothing with the taxes as president is going to be 1 in both cases. Both of these ones, however, assume that either the Republican one or the Democrat one. There's only a 0.5 probability that either of those will actually happen. So the highest possible probability each candidate's actions can have 
is 0 0.5. The simple way to show this mathematically is to multiply all those probabilities by 0.5 to get the total probability. So p of d equals 0.5. p of a given d equals 0.25. And when you multiply that by 0.5, you'll get 0.125. P of a prime given d is 0.75. When you multiply that times 0.5, you get 0 0.375. Note that 0 0.125 plus 0 0.375 equal 0.5. The probability of the Democrat doing one of an unlimited number of possible things during his presidency is equal to the probability of him having a presidency. P of R also equals 0 0.5. P of A given R equals 0 0.85. When you multiply that by P of R by 0 0.5, you get 0 0.425. P of A prime given R equals 0 0.15. When you multiply that by 0 0.5, you get 0 0.075. Again, Notice that 0 0.425 plus 0 0.075 equals 0 0.5. The probability of the Republican doing any of an unlimited number of possible things during his presidency is the same as the probability of him having a presidency. Now we can find the total probability that the business tax will be cut. We can do that by adding together 0 0.425 and 0 0.125 which gives us 0 0.55. This is the probability that regardless of who gets elected, the taxes will be cut. I got this answer by adding together P of A given D times P of D plus P of A given R times P of R. The probability that taxes will not be cut is 0 0.375 plus 0 0.075 or 0 0.45. So going back to our first example, when you read about the cut and your internet goes out, you know the chance of the tax cut was only 0.25 if the Democrat got elected compared to 0.85 if the Republican did. Bayes' theorem tells you how to estimate the mathematical probability that the Democrat or the Republican won in the past based on the fact that the tax cut has been enacted. Bayes' theorem tells you how to use the information I showed to find what you're looking for. P of D given A and P of R given A, meaning the probability a Democrat was elected given that the tax cut happened, or probability that a Republican was elected given that the tax cut happened. Here's how you find that out. P of D given A equals to P of A given D times P of D, and all that divided by P of A. P of R given A equals P of A given R times P of R, and all of that multiplied by P of A. So you, when you read the news about the tax cut, even after your internet goes out, you know that the probability the president is a Republican is just under 0.773, or 77.3%, and the probability that the president is a Democrat is just over 0 0.227, or 22.7%. This is the simplest explanation I could come up with. If you have questions about specific parts, I would be happy to clarify in the comments. I hope you found this helpful, and look forward to answering any questions you have. Thanks for watching.